Okay, so what's up guys? Um, I've really never done a tutorial before, but I wanted to show you guys how to do this because I feel like it's something we have to do a lot and it could be really beneficial to learn. So our coach sent me this template today for their locker room main tags. They just got new lockers and obviously he wants one for every player. So there's 120 some people on the roster and we want to do this without having to go into each Photoshop document and change the name and then export it and then do it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to use InDesign and Data Merge. So I just wanted to stop the clip real quick here to add some context. This would be super useful for Twitter headers, name tags, media passes, etc. And we're going to make it happen. So we have this original. It's 12 inches by 2 inches high. And this is the version that we're actually going to use to Data Merge. So in InDesign, we're going to open a document. The pages we're using to print are eight and a half by 14 tall. That means we could fit three per page. So right now I'm just going to place the name tag in there just so you can see this. So before the data merge, this is what it's going to look like. Or after the data merge, it's going to look something like this. There's going to be a lot of these pages. And we're just going to make one single cut along this line right here to get, and then we'll delaminate them and we'll put them inside of their inserts. But, see, the original Photoshop document already has text, which is not editable in InDesign. So, we're going to get rid of this. What I've done is made a version that doesn't have any text, and I've saved it. So, I'm going to bring that into the InDesign place the document. Move it to the corner. Perfect. So what we'll do now is we will go and find out what the sizes are for these texts. So this was 48.5. So all I'm doing here is I'm creating the text boxes exactly like they were in the Photoshop document, which are going to serve as our placeholders. So I didn't feel like you guys super necessary for me to show you how to just manipulate all of the text. So basically I'm just recreating each box making the text the same color, you know, putting them exactly how they had it in the template that they sent me. Okay, cool. Now, how do we get all of our names in a situation where we can data merge them into here? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my master football roster. So we have here, and the master has everything separated by column. All I need here is the first and last name the high school and position, but the problem is, is I need the first and last name separated because when you data merge, it's going to take a column and associate it, associate it with a text box. So like this text box is going to be first name, this one's going to be last name. So what I'm going to do here is data from workbook and I'm going to go to the exact same workbook that I'm actually working in. Take the master sheet, transform data. It's going to open what looks like this. I'm going to get rid of that and get rid of all the columns I don't need first. So I don't need those, I don't need that, I don't need the hometown, and I don't need the previous. He wants the high school for everybody. We still have the issue where these are in the same column. So I can go to split column by delimiter which means by whatever I specify, it'll split the column. So if I wanted it to be split by every time there's an E for some reason, I could say custom and then split at the letter E. Okay, and then it's gonna you know, give me some random results where every name split after the letter E. Okay, but we don't want that. So we're gonna split by the eliminator and we want it to split at the space between the first and last name. So we'll go here. And it's obviously not perfect because there's two names that have a nickname or something or a junior that brings it into the third column, but we will fix that. So we're going to call this name, or sorry, first name, last name, 
This one doesn't matter. I guess it can stay going through. So we're going to get rid of it. Position and high school. Sweet. So we're going to go close and load. This will bring up this data that we just sorted through and got rid of. It does not change the original master sheet. This is what is called a query, which if I change something in here, it will change something in here. But this is just this data manipulated into whatever form I currently need it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the junior here and get rid of Deuce. Probably just wants his full name on there. And get rid of this column. So now we have this that has all of the text areas that I will need. And what we have to do now, we're going to call this CSP name tags. Take whatever Excel sheet or what have you that you're going to need to data merge once you've got your data set up and you need to save it as a CSV file. So I'm going to call this state of CSV. Locker room data merge. Okay, it's going to tell you that you just need the one that you're currently on. Which okay, once we're finished with the saving the CSV, now we have all the data in the columns that we need it to. We have the file saved. We're going to go into data merge. And if you don't have the data merge window open, go to window, utilities, data merge. Okay, so it's going to bring up this menu. These three, this little bar up here, select the data source, find the CSV you just saved, and now you have all of these different texts, categories from the columns that you created. So what I'm going to do is double click this and click first name. Now one thing you don't want to do, and this is a problem that I've, I've done before, is I would just click the box and select first name. And if I, <clears throat> excuse me, if I already had something in there, it's going to add that to every single time that this placeholder goes in. So make sure you double click it, last name. So with these, there's going to be some that are going to be overset depending on the longer last names. But basically most of the time, probably 75%, they're going to fit. But we can still go through after we data merge and make the text smaller for those longer last names. So basically, I'm going to go back through to high school, select high school, now to position, select position. Okay, and you can't see that because the text is overset. If I wanted to, then I could make it small enough to display, select all of that, make it something like that. But most positions are two letters and 90 fits best. For most. <clears throat> okay, we have all of these placeholders set. So this is calling for the first name column, this is calling for the last name column, this is calling for high school, and this is calling for position. So what we'll do is we'll select this right here, create merge document, make sure this is changed to multiple records, and then we'll preview it. So now it shows me what these are going to look like. So that looks pretty good for those at least. We'll click OK. And it's going to generate the rest of these. Now, there's going to be a few things that we need to go through and change. And with some templates, you won't have to worry about this if you're not making large text or if you don't have that many names that are going to be longer, uh, so on and so forth. But basically, I'm just going to go through quickly and try to find where we have overset text or positions that won't fit in the box. it is. Okay, great. Now that we've gone through and double checked all of these, all of these look good. Go file, export. So 
So I actually did that wrong. I need to export it for print. There's a version I created earlier. So we'll call this 2. Export it. And it'll take, it'll take a little while for that to export. But once it does export, this is what you get. You will have as many pages as you fit these onto. And I think in this case we have 43 pages. We will print all of these out. And once they're printed out, we will cut them along these white lines and laminate them, which I will not be doing.